Anastasia, Book 1, Chapter 13, A Helper and Mentor for Your Child. And asking Anastasia how a plot of ground with seed plantings, even plantings carried out in the special manner, she described in maintaining close contact with men, could facilitate the raising of children. I expected to hear an answer, something like, Children need to be imbued with a love of nature. However, I was wrong. What she actually said was amazing, both in its simplicity of argument and in the depth of its philosophical implications. Nature and the mind of the universe have seen to it that every new man is born a sovereign, a king. He is like an angel, pure and undefiled. Through the still soft upper part of his head, he takes in a huge flood of information from the universe. The abilities inherent in each newborn child are such as to allow him to become the wisest creature in the universe, godlike. It takes him very little time to bestow grace and happiness upon his parents. During this period, amounting to no more than nine earth years, he becomes aware of what constitutes creation and the meaning of human existence and everything that he needs to accomplish this already exists. Only the parent should not distort the genuine natural structure of creation by cutting the child off from the most perfect works in the universe. The word of technocracy, however, does not allow parents to do the right thing. What does an infant see with its first conscious glance around? He sees the ceilings, the edge of his crib, some patches of fabric, the walls, all attributes and values of the artificial world create by a technocratic society. And in this world, he finds his mother and her breasts. This must be the way things are, he concludes. His, smile, his smiling parents offer him toys and other objects that rattle and squeak as though they were priceless treasures. Why? He will spend a long time trying to make sense of this rattling and squeaking. He will try to comprehend them both through his conscious mind and his subconscious. And then these same smiling parents will try wrapping him up in some kind of fabric, which he finds most uncomfortable. He will make attempts to free himself, but in vain. And the only means of protest he has at his disposal is a cry, a cry of protest, an appeal for help, a cry of rebellion. And from that moment on, this angel and sovereign becomes an indigent slave begging for hands out. One after another, the child is present with the a contrament of an artificial world. He is rewarded for his acceptance by some new toy or item of clothing. And along with this, the thought is drumming to him that these are the dominant objects in the world where he has arrived. Still in his infancy, despite his status as the most perfect being in the universe, he is pandered to and treated as an imperfect creature. Even in those institutions you consider educational, where again, he is constantly remind, reminded of the values of this artificial world. Not until the age of nine does he hear a passing mention of the existence of the world of nature. 
and then only as an adjunct to that other more important world of manufactured objects. And, mo and most people are never afforded the opportunity to become aware of the truth, even to the end of their days. And so it seems as though the simple question, what is the meaning of life, goes unanswered. The meaning of life, that is to be found in truth, joy, and love. A nine-year-old child brought up in the natural world has a far more accurate perception of creation than all the scientific institutions of your world, or indeed many of your prominent scholars. Stop, Anastasia. You probably have in mind a knowledge of nature, assuming his life proceeds along the same lines as yours. Here I can agree with you, but think, today man's is obliged Rightly or wrongly, that is another question. But he is obliged to live specifically in our technocratic world, as you call it. Someone brought up as your pro someone brought up as you propose was certainly no nature, and have a feeling for it. But in everything else, he will be an utter ignoramus. Besides, there are other sciences like mathematics, physics, chemistry, or simply just knowing about life and its societal manifestations. For someone who has learnt at the right time about what constitute creation, those things are mere trifles. If he wants or considers it necessary to prove himself in some scientific field, he will easily surpass all others. How could that happen so quickly? Man in the world of technocracy has never yet invented anything that is not already present in nature. Even the most perfect manufactured device are but a poor imitation of what exists in nature. Well, that may be, but you promised to explain how a child could be raised and his capabilities develop in our condition. Well, let me talk about this in a way I can understand using concrete examples. I should try to be more concrete, replied Anastasia. I have already visualized and I have already visualized situation like this and have tried to hint to one family what they should do. Only there was no way they could have grasped the cru crucial point and asked their child the proper questions. These parents turn out to have an unusual, pure, talented child who could have brought tremendous benefit to people living on earth. So these parents arrive with this three-year-old child at their dacha plot and bring along his favorite toys. Artificial toys, toys which displace the true priorities of the universe. Oh. If only they had not done that, just think, the child could have been occupied and entertained with something far more interesting than senseless and even harmful interaction with manufactured objects. First of all, you should ask him to help you. Only ask him in all seriousness without any pandering, especially since he will actually be able to offer your, you assistance. If you do any planting, for example, ask him to hold the seeds in preparation for sowing, or take out the seed beds, or have him put a seed into the hole you have prepared. And in the process, talk to him about what you were doing. Something like this. We will be putting the little seed into the ground and covering it with earth. When the sun in the sky shines and warms the earth, the little seed will get warm and start to grow. It will want to see the sun, and the little shoot will poke its head out of the earth, just like this one. At this point, you can show him some little blades of glass. If the seeds likes the sunshine, it will grow bigger and bigger, and maybe turn into a tree, or something smaller like a flower. And I wanted to bring you tasty fruit, and you will eat it if you like it. The little shoot will prepare its fruit for you. 
Whenever you arrive with your child at the dacha plot, or when he awakes first thing in the morning, have him look and see whether any shoots have come up. If you should notice one, show your delight, even when you are putting young plants, rather than seeds into the ground. It is important to explain to your child what you are doing. If you are planting tomato seedlings, for example, let him hand you the stalks one by one. If a stalk should inadvertently break, take the broken stalk into your hands and say, I do not think this one is a, will live or bear fruit since it is broken. But broken, but let us try planting it anyway and plant at least one of the broken ones right along with the others. A few days later, when you visit the seed bed again with your child and the stalks have firm up, Point out the broken withering stalk to your little one and remind him that it was broken during the planting. But do not use any preaching tone of voice in doing so. You need to talk with him as an equal. You should bear in mind the thought that he is superior to you in some respects. In the purity of his thought, for example, he is an angel. If you succeed in understanding that, you can then proceed intuitively and your child will indeed become a person who will happy fire your days. Whenever you sleep under the stars, take your child with you. Lay him down beside you. Let him look at the stars. But under no circumstance, tell him the names of the planets or how you perceive their origin and function. Since this is something you do not really know yourself. And the fear is stored in your brain will only lead the child astray from the truth. His subconscious knows the truth and it will penetrate his consciousness all by itself. All you need to do is to tell him that you like looking at the shining stars and ask your child which star he likes best of all. In general, it is very important to know how to ask your child questions. The next year, you can offer your child his own seed bed. Fix it up and give him the freedom to do whatever he likes with it. Do not ever compel him by force to do anything with it. And do not correct, correct what he has done. You can simply ask him what he likes. You can offer help, but only after asking his permission to work along with him. When you are planting cereal grains, have him throw some grains on the seed bed for you. Okay, I remarked to um, Anastasia, still not fully convinced. Maybe a child like this will show interest in the plant world. Maybe he'll become a good agronomist. But where is he going to get knowledge from in other areas? What do you mean we're from? It is not just a matter of having a knowledge and feeling about what grows and how. The main thing is that the child is starting to think, analyze, and cells are awakening in his brain, which will operate throughout his life. They will make him brighter and more talented compared to those whose corresponding cells are still dormant, dormant. As far as civilized life goes, what you call progress, he may well turn out to be superior in any field of endeavor. All the more so since the purity of his thought will make him an exceptional happy person. The contact he has established with his plants will allow him to constantly take in and exchange more and more information. The incoming messages will be received by his subconscious and transmit it to his consciousness in the form of many new thoughts and discoveries. discoveries. Outwardly, he will look like everyone else, but inwardly, this is the kind of man you call a genius.